So, okay, I don't know the story exactly. Okay. So the basic story is that there's a prince who um, saw like three, like, or how did it work exactly? I think his parents told him like, don't ever leave the castle. Like he was stuck in the castle, so he couldn't see the outside world because his parents wanted him to never know suffering. So one day, he's reminding me of something. It's fine. So he he was no, he never knows suffering, and then one day he went out into the world, and during that day he saw, um, you know, a sick man, a poor man, and like I don't know something else, and someone else who's like sad in some way. Like how else can you be? Sick, poor, like just unhappy, like a a man with like a you know bad friends or something. Whatever. Anyway, so he saw suffering. <laughs> That's not yes. doesn't compare. Anyway, he saw suffering. Oh Bella. Um and he decided that <clears throat> like this was, you know, bad. That like he wanted to figure out what was suffering and like destroy it and remove it from society. So he goes out into the world and he like becomes increasingly like ascetic, right? He believes that he comes to believe that, or he joins the ascetics. He learns from them. They say that all suffering is caused by attachment, that attachment to material things, you know, attachment mm -hmm. to like people, attachment to concepts, attachment to anything. That these things are what cause suffering. So he goes and sits under a tree and meditates, and he tries to become totally detached from everything. He wants to just like. Forget about all the poor people, you know, forget about all the rich people, forget about everything. Just separate yourself from it, and this will alleviate suffering for you. But he found... Well, anyway, so he's sitting under this tree trying to understand, you know, what was, what was this? And he's sitting there, and he's starving, and he just wants to know. Like, how can you end suffering? He just wants to know so bad, and suffering sucks so much, you know. And he's just sitting under that tree thinking about, fuck, how do I end suffering? And he doesn't eat? And he doesn't sleep, and he doesn't take care of himself, and his body is hurting. And then a little girl comes up to him and gives him berries. And that's the story of the Buddha. Huh. I can't believe I didn't... never... I mean, heard this. <laughs> it's hard, because Buddhism is a school of thought that embraces, um, like, like, peaceful coexistence of ideologies. That's so are you a Buddhist then? I mean, I, I'm not a Buddhist, no. I've studied Buddhism. But there are many different schools of Buddhism, right? And all the different schools have their own problems, right? Like, some are too attached to their... And you can actually read this in the in their scripture, and you can read criticisms of other schools of Buddhism. Right? Like Zen Buddhists will like criticize like mainstream Chinese Buddhists for being too scriptural, for like caring about the scripture too much, or like you know people just think like Zen Buddhism has this concept of sudden enlightenment, like boom. So it's kind of like pop, you know, like pop Buddhism a little bit, which is kind of probably why it caught on in the United States actually, which is a funny thought. Are you videotaping all this? Uh huh. Oh, that's awesome. Anyway, <laughs> these are this is great. Um, yeah. Anyway, so that's kind of like I don't know. Buddhism is really interesting how it breaks down among schools. There was even a school of Buddhism actually that um, their entire thing was that they would just learn to disprove everyone else. Like anybody who came to them with ideas, they would just like figure out how to like cut those ideas up and like show them, you know, like oh, you think this is a lighter, like. Where is the lighterness? You know, like they wouldn't, they weren't necessarily speaking the truth. They just learned techniques for like getting rid of people's ideas. Um, so, Buddhism just, I don't know. To even call Buddhism a thing is so weird because I think it was so ubiquitous. I don't think there was like anybody basically who wasn't Buddhist. Um, just like in the sense, you know, the Dark Ages in, in Europe, there basically wasn't anybody who was not Christian. Now, maybe that's actually not true. I don't know. I guess they were the heathens, but they all got burned and killed. <laughs> um, anyway, going off topic. What was the point? I don't remember the point. I was just saying like... You uh, just the, asked me yeah, how much you, I know. Do you know about Buddhism? Right. I it turns out I know a, a like, decent amount about Buddhism, which is kind of weird. Um, but I've studied it, you know. But it's weird to like even say that. I mean, I'm not... I don't know. That's so... Uh, I feel like it's arrogant or something. Because, like, there are people who know so much more about Buddhism than I do. 